Hi scuba divers, my name is Ben. I'm a passionate technical and cave diver and scuba diving instructor for different agencies like DOE. And in this video, I'm going to unbox and show you the brand new dive lights from Thor Offshore Engineering, the Tauri Pro. On this channel, I do a lot of training tips for scuba divers and underwater videographers and scuba diving gear reviews just like this. If you like to watch more similar content, hit subscribe and ring the bell. And now, dive down! We happy? Yeah. We happy? Yeah, we happy. Thor Offshore Engineering is known for years to produce highest quality dive lights with technical and cave divers in their minds. The brand is based in Germany and they really emphasize made in Germany and German engineering as a brand philosophy. At the beginning of 2020, they released four brand new models that weren't just upgrades to the existing model, but really new models designed from scratch. Katya ordered one of these in January during the boat show and it was delivered today, finally. The lights were neither sent to me for free nor do I get any money from Thor for this video or anything else nor do I have any personal connection to them, except I know some of the guys personally and dove with them, uh, which is not a surprise since the cave diving community in Germany is relatively small. So this review is absolutely unbiased and my personal opinion just as a disclaimer. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we can't test it underwater, which I will definitely make up for later. So let's have a look what we can find inside the box. I already opened the box for the intro and inside the box we find the light head. Usually you would find the battery and the cap, the head of the battery inside the box. We've taken the battery in January directly from the show since we needed it for Katya's heating vest so it's not inside the box. So we also we find some piece of cloth. I don't really know what's that for. Maybe to uh, clean the lights or something. Um, you find some sweets. That's that's very nice. And we find 3D printed arrows and cookies inside the box. Uh, it's made from the same material. Uh, many parts of the lights are. It's uh, totally 3D printed. Very nice. And that's more or less everything that's in the box now. So the whole package, if you order it as a bundle, uh, the main parts, the light head, the battery, the charger, some sweets, manual, and the cookie and the arrow. So we put everything away that's not necessary for the review. So let's first talk about the battery. As I said, we ordered it from the boat show and we directly took the battery from the show because Katya needed it uh, for diving in the winter time. And that's why Katya ordered it directly with this winter cap, however you call it. The winter cap is nice to use with an active heating system like a heating vest. Uh, and to power it from just one battery tank, which makes your belt less messy. Sure, some people claim, especially in cave diving, that they like separate batteries for light and heating. Still, this is more a matter of taste in my opinion. 
especially if you trust the sealing of the battery, what I personally, in this case, do. The winter cap has two cords, so one goes to the light head and one goes to the heating vest and you have two switches to switch them on and off separately. However, the winter cap is an upgrade. The summer cap, the standard version that comes with the battery, has just one cable for the light head and this one comes at 50 euros extra. So from my first impression, everything seems to be packed properly. However, there's no special case included in the package for the light head and the battery. For the old models, there is a case available at around 70 euros extra, what is a bit pricey for my taste. But if you like a special case for your lights, you might want to go for it. And I'm sure Thor makes cases for the new models too. This one is the T10 model with the so-called design loop to fix it to your belt. The design loop is 3D printed and replaces the standard pipe clamp style ones, which looks nicer and eliminates the risk of hurting yourself or parts of your gear with the metal pipe clamps. This one is usually not included in the standard package and comes at around 45 euros extra. We got this one for free as a special offer during the show in January, but even if not, I guess I would have bought it anyway because it's just nice. When I remember it correctly, these guys are available in different colors, which is nice to individualize your equipment. What I really like is the rounded shape of the bottom, which makes it easy to store your long hose underneath. When we open the canister, we see the cap is held in place by uh, these metal clamps very securely, they feel really sturdy and I have no doubt that they hold everything together and nothing opens accidentally underwater. When I open it now we see there are the plugs for the charger and two blind plugs, maybe you cannot really see it in the camera here, but there are two blind plugs, literally just some holes um, where the contacts can go in by just turning the head. You can go from working mode to the fly mode, meaning that the head is disconnected, the cap is disconnected from the battery to prevent that it accidentally turns on in your back or wherever you don't want it to turn on. The battery itself is completely closed, so you can't see the actual cells. What I think protects the cells better against water if the seals fail and it starts leaking eventually. Speaking of seals, the battery is sealed with two O-rings, one on the bottom here and one here on the cap. Generally, the battery is very well made. It's very robust and has some nice details like these small grooves here on the switch protectors. To indicate the on off position. Some other nice details are the cord protectors here, which really helps to protect uh, the cords from breaking in this area. Let's talk about the electrical properties of it. The lithium iron battery runs on a nominal voltage of 11.1 volts and has got 8.7 ampere hours, which gives you 96.6 watt hours. Uh, everything that is very nice is imprinted here on the battery which is very nice if you fly with this battery. The security personnel on the airport can directly see uh, if this battery is allowed on the plane 
and most airlines allow it if it's below 100 watt hours. So this guy is suitable to be taken on board of a plane. Thor offers two larger battery packs with either uh, 153 watt hours and 264 watt hours, which you should consider when doing longer cave dives while using a heating vest or multiple long dives a day with no possibility to charge in between. Since the lighthead consumes around 18 watt on highest level, the T10 with slightly below 100 watt hours should give you around 5 hours of light. But I think for 90% of the dives, even cave dives, the T10 is just a great option, especially if you often fly to locations where you don't need extremely long burn times or want a power heating system, you want definitely go for the T10, particularly because larger batteries don't go easily on a plane. Most airlines just don't allow them or just with a bit more hassle. The battery itself is charged with this charger. To be honest, it's nothing special. So no digital display or anything else. It's just a cheap charger like most other brands give you. There are only a few that give away more advanced chargers, but it does its job. It plugs into the battery with just simple banana plugs, just like this. It's very easy. So nothing really fancy. Let's call it German sobriety. The battery is in the market for some time now. It's the same one the old versions used, so nothing new here. Let's get to the light hat. The main difference is that with this light hat design, Thor went away from the test tube design that was dominant in the early models like the Rev 2. This light head is completely closed and comparable to the newer like Halcyon lights, uh, like the Focus 2. You instantly recognize the low weight of this thing. It's only 449, 450 grams, which is compared to other light hats, really lightweight. The Goodman handle is 3D printed and not made from aluminum. And in comparison to the Thor Rev 2, you cannot remove the test tube and use it as a video light. And you cannot change the reflector by yourself. However, in this light head, Changing the reflector is not really necessary since it is not possible to break or scratch the reflector without completely opening the entire light head. Unlike the Halcyon Focus, this light does not use uh, Fresnel lenses and without a movable lens or a movable reflector, it is not focusable. This is, in my opinion, a small disadvantage to the focusable Halcyon models or its bigger brother, the Thor Rev 2. As I said, the Goodman handle is 3D printed. At first glance, it appears to be cheap in comparison to a Goodman handle made from aluminum, but this material is also used in the automotive sector. And if you look closely and you really try to bend it, you see it's kind of robust too. Still, these things have always to be tested in a long-term test anyway. The standard version of the Goodman handle is adjustable underwater with these screws. So you can make it wider and narrower. And it fits even small hands without gloves. The Goodman itself feels very good. It has this slight curvature, making it very comfortable. And it comes with the integrated thumb loop you can see here. The light hat 
is very, very well balanced. It comes in two slightly different models, the Tura and the Tari. Each of these models has a standard or a pro version. The Tura is slightly smaller than this one. This one is the Tari. The main difference is the angle of the light beam. The smaller Tura has an angle of five degrees, while the Tori is with seven degrees slightly larger. Both are spots which are very good for longer distance light communication, but not for photography or videography. The difference between the standard and the pro version is this red pizza push button, giving you the option to turn on and off the light head, plus it makes it possible to dim the light in five levels, which is very, very helpful, especially in dark environments like caves, where the highest level will probably blind all your buddies. Plus, dimming it down might give you even more burn time if you don't need so much light. The dim levels should be something like 25, 50, 75, 100 and 125 percent, which makes sense maybe from a marketing perspective. In my opinion, it makes no sense from a technical point of view because the maximum output is 100 percent, no matter what the designer or the engineer wrote on the button. The manufacturer specifies the brightness, or more correctly, the luminous flux. Don't want to get too deep into the physical details here, to be 45,000 lux for the spot in each of both lights, the Tari and the Tura, at max, at a distance of one meter. I thought of measuring this due to the lack of a proper measuring device with an app for the iPhone. However, it won't work in my opinion. The luminous flux depends on the illuminated area, respectively the area covered by the spot. The problem is that the spot is at one meter distance, larger than the measuring area of my phone. So the measured luminous flux with the iPhone would result in unrealistically low values. So let's connect everything to show you the spot, the light beam. If you turn it on, it starts flickering shortly. As you can see, this is just a check that you see the light is working properly. I can show you the beam now, almost one meter, the height of my camera. This is the lowest dim level, 25%, 50%, one more, 75%, 100%, and now 125%. Maybe you cannot see the brightness correctly because my camera may change now the ISO and the aperture. However, you see it has a nice clear spot in the middle plus a soft corona surrounding, no pun intended in these times. The Corona is really nice and easy to look at and uh, easy to use it for active and passive light communication on a water. Maybe you noticed one very cool gimmick of this light head and wondered why a guy like me wants to have a purple light. So this one is my girlfriend's light and she likes purple. I would prefer beautiful signal black or dewy blue. And this is a great feature. You can just exchange this part and they come in eight different colors. It's not really the most important feature, but still nice, especially if you want to create a bit personal touch. The light head is really nicely made. It is highest quality made in Germany and it comes, as I said before, in two different models, the smaller Tura and the slightly bigger Tari, each in the standard non-dimmable or the dimmable pro version. For me personally, a downside for this light is definitely that it is not focusable. However, if you don't have this feature, you might not miss it anyway. I used a non-focusable light for over 10 years and it was never a problem. 
Still, I like the focus on my actual lights. Another but minor negative point is the relatively cheap charger and no included case. I know most brands just give away very cheap China chargers and don't offer free cases too. But maybe Thor feels a little bit encouraged to include a more advanced charger and a case in the future. These things are still very, very tiny points. On the other hand, this light is extremely lightweight. It feels great on the hand, it is well balanced, has a great light output and comes with a really nice features like the dim function and the pro version and the exchangeable colored ring at a very attractive price point between 595 euros for the standard Tira, the small one, and 649 euros for the bigger Tari. If you want to get your hands on the pro versions, you would have to invest a little bit less than 100 euros extra. The battery comes at around 560 euros and you can almost certainly save some money if you buy it as a bundle. The new lights, the Tari and the Tura are not successors of the Rev2, but a completely different lineup that comes at a much lower price than the Thor flagship, the Rev2. And even lower than most other high-end dive lights. If you like to have a really lightweight and compact dive light with a high light output, very, very well manufactured and designed and don't want to break the bank too much, the new Thor lineup is definitely for you. I personally would always choose the pro versions because I think having the options to dim the light is important and worth it a hundred euros more. Still, this is a matter of taste. Unfortunately, we cannot go into the water right now, but I will definitely show you how this light performs in real applications on the water as soon as we can go diving again in another video. And maybe I'll do a comparison to other similar lights in the market. In the meantime, you can watch the other videos on the channel I made for you. Have fun, take care, and see you in the next video.